This is Alicia Hansel for Spectrum Sino. Earlier this week, I was down at a Place in the Sun live exhibition and had the opportunity to speak to Peter Robinson of AIPP. Let's have a look what he had to say. So the trends we're seeing from um, the Asian markets, and particularly China, are for investment properties of between sort of 50 and 100,000 pounds sterling. Now you can't buy a whole property for that. So what we've seen is the rise of a whole lot of new investment asset classes particularly student accommodation. They're easy to get into a 10-year hold, a good yield and dividend payment, and then it's an open market exit. They've been very popular with Chinese buyers. And what does it give a Chinese buyer, apart from obviously uh, rental income? So underlying the interest in this market is the fact that the UK has got a, a very good land registry system. So if a foreign buyer, a Chinese buyer, wants to be assured that the property they own is properly registered, supported and legally theirs, the UK has its great land registry system. The UK rule of law means that it's also protected and we have a very well established uh, uh, lettings business in the UK, in other words that are professional management companies to make sure that the property is let and that the yield or the rent is repatriated to the owner. And you mentioned there the periphery areas within uh, the UK, aside from London. What are the key areas that you are looking at that the Chinese uh, buyers might be looking to invest in? Well, do you know what? The, there are what we call the northern powerhouse cities in the UK. And a lot of them are well known to Chinese uh, buyers because, of course, they have famous football teams in them. So it's no coincidence that there's a lot of interest in Manchester. Manchester United, Manchester City, in Liverpool, Liverpool Football Club, my football club, and other places like Leeds and Sheffield, which haven't been so successful on the world stage, the European stage. So you're really looking at the northern powerhouse cities, where they're only just beginning to see the capital growth that has been in London for many, many years, and has actually priced out a lot of people. So these northern cities are really now taking off, where most buyers, a lot of buyers, have been priced out of London. Uh, and you previously mentioned that you were looking at kind of 100, uh, 50 to 100,000 pounds of the capital that they're going to be investing. For more high net worth um, customers, where would they be looking? Are we just focusing on London or are we moving to other European cities? Um, it depends what asset you want to hold. If it's a whole property, then of course you can spend a lot of money on property in the southeast of the country. That's where most of the value in uh, real estate is, is, is tied up also parts of Cheshire and other parts of Yorkshire, but I would say, I would say if, if you're looking for a higher yield, a higher investment value, then you're looking sort of outside of the M25 orbital motorway. You're looking in very leafy, well-to-do areas, perhaps uh, around Guildford, in Surrey, in Farnham, in, also in Surrey, um, Seven Oaks in Kent, and other areas which see the high net worth people that work in perhaps the city of London, they live in these areas very, very uh, expensive and nice houses in those areas. And of course, the UK has got a real problem, which is an investor's opportunity. And that is, there is more demand than supply of property in the UK, particularly for large family homes. So the right kind of home can be a real good investment opportunity. Uh, obviously, at the moment, we're going through a political uh, turmoil, if you would call it. To say the least, yeah. Um, we've had a Brexit coming up. How do you feel that is going to affect the trend um, well, the Brexit issue aside, the UK has never been in the euro. The UK has got pounds sterling. And with all the issues that are happening in Europe right now, and Europe's under a lot of pressure, Brexit is causing a lot of other European countries to think about leaving. We're basically looking at the strength of the English pound. And this has attracted a lot of buyers into the UK because the pound is still a very strong economy. And so buying the property in the UK is not only an investment in an asset class with a yield and a, and a hold for 10 years, it's a currency play. It's a currency play in pound sterling. And from what I've heard, the pound is going to do well over the next few years, while as the euro really is going to remain under a lot of pressure. But who knows what the future really brings in currency. And um, talking about the euro there in kind of Europe, where are you feeling are the, the powerhouses within Europe and maybe for the Chinese market where they're going to be buying and again what benefits they get apart from um, okay. the rental Well, if you're looking at, well, it depends what you want. If you're looking for a pure investment, um, then there are places like Barcelona, which is geographically fine for buying uh, its 
the landscape, and Barcelona really is almost a microcosm of, of a very opportunistic um, growth market in Spain. If you're looking for holiday and lifestyle, Marbella in Spain is also very popular, and of course the French Riviera also. Brindisi in Italy is doing very well at the moment for, for lifestyle, and of course the Italian culture uh, and the lifestyle that brings is very attractive. If you're looking for um, a residency visa, um, then there are a couple of golden visa programs um, with a, a floor price of 500,000 euros in Portugal and 300,000 euros in Spain. Basically what that means is, in Portugal, if you are as a Chinese national want to buy a property worth a minimum of 500,000, then you get uh, an escalating level of right to abide in that country. It takes a few years, but you can basically get a residency visa. Most people are buying um, two or three bed apartments around Lisbon, the capital, just purely as an investment play. There's no uh, other involvement on that. And of course, Spain's at a lower price point. But I could say a lot more, but I'll stop there. Um, and are you seeing an increase in uptake in these gold visas uh, from the Chinese market in the last five years? Yeah, years? absolutely. Um, I'm sharing the Portuguese property conference actually next Tuesday here in London again for the third year. So I'm very close to the Portuguese market and I do think it's a fascinating market. Um, it's got a lot of opportunity within it. I think it's got a long way to go with the Golden Visa program yet now that the Troika financial controls have been uh, ostensibly removed. And old Europe, as it were, has always got a fascination for the newer emerging countries. It's more consolidated in its real estate offerings, uh, greater controls over ownership, more reassurance about ownership. And there are opportunities to set up businesses in these countries because Europe as a whole had a bit of a, uh, a bit of a debacle in 2007 and 8 with, with with the economic global crash. So they're looking to attract foreign investment and looking to bring in the entrepreneurial spirit, particularly from the Asian countries, to come in and breathe new ideas, new capital into those economies. It's based upon an investment in property, which gives a surety of ownership. Really, they're looking to take it from the capital, uh, take it from the residential ownership up into new entrepreneurial businesses. I think it's a long way to run yet. Well, we've had some fantastic expert knowledge and advice there. Thank you very much, Peter, uh, and we will hopefully be speaking to you soon. This has been Alicia Hansel at A Place in the Sun.